heart free beginning. Dean! Dean! Wake up! I've got something to tell you. Something really, really important. Dean squirmed unwillingly out of sleep, then sat up, using the back of his fists to rub the sleep out of his eyes, then straightening his stripy blue pajamas. There was a man kneeling beside his bed, about forty, wearing a dark striped suit and carrying a book under one arm. There was no title, but there was a large gold embossed crucifix on the cover. He seemed eager to speak, but unsure how to begin. Hello, said Dean, his little voice showing no fear. Please don't shout out. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to tell you something. Something more important than anything else in the whole world that no one's ever told you about before. Dean, do you know who I am? Of course I do. You're me, from the future. The man's jaw literally dropped. But how? You've brought your Bible again. And you want to talk about how I can be happy when I'm older. Again? Every couple of years, you come to my room. You talk about church and stuff. And your wife, who went away. And your job, and how much you hate it, but you can't leave it ever. But mostly it's God's love, and how you didn't know it till you were old. The visitor's mouth worked, as if searching for words. But none came. Dean disentangled a hand from the bed covers, and patted him on the shoulder. It's okay, he said. You're kind of like my granddad. But I never told Mum and Dad about you. It was a secret. The man's voice quavered. You mean I've tried before and failed? Dean nodded, wagging his head back and forth several times. I'm eleven and a half now. This is the fifth one. I think you get more young every time. When you started, you said you were seventy. The visitor sat back, bewildered. He spoke slowly, staring ahead, eyes fixed on nothing. I came here to stop myself wasting the first half of my life. Now you're telling me I wasted the second half trying to prevent it? Don't be sad. Hey, you want to see my trains? I got a new one. Dean leapt out of bed and padded over to a crowded table. He took something and carried it back placing it in the visitor's hands. It was a miniature train, a blue mallard, every spoke and bump rendered in precisely scaled metal. The man let out a surprised breath. I've still got this. It's on the mantelpiece at home. I used to make long lines all around the room, and... Well, you know, don't you, because... He looked up, smiling, but saw the boy was suddenly looking pensive, upset. I guess this is the last time, said Dean. You're going to try again in a few more years, and I'll be nine. I won't see you again. I... I don't know. I don't know if I will. Even if I... already have. Hey, I know. You take the train and put it with the other one. Then, if you come back, you can give it back and... Yeah... It can be my very first one, and, and, if you decide you don't want to, then I know I'm going to get given it when I'm as old as you. The man blinked at the rapidity of Dean's thoughts. If you're sure. Dean did his head-wagging nod. I'm totally sure. They were startled by a creaking floorboard somewhere behind the closed door. That's Mum! hissed Dean. You gotta go, now! Clutching the new model train, the man vanished in the sound of electrical sparks as Dean leapt into bed and pretended to be asleep.